What's up everyone? Today we're gonna to be talking all things art supplies. So there's a way we could break down a lot of this art supplies. Um, obviously you have to have number one, substrate, something to paint on. Number two, paint, something to put on the substrate. Number three, brushes or palette knives, something to apply the paint to your substrate. Number four is gonna be varnish. So once you're finished with your painting, something that can give it that pop, right? That nice little glossy finish to really give it a complete look and almost enhance the contrast of some of the colors that you've used in your painting. Let's dive in. First, let's talk about substrate. Uh, for me personally, I paint on two different types of substrates. I paint on canvas, like you are seeing behind me, and then I also paint on paper, which a lot of my work, I paint on 9x12s, which is just some acrylic paper, like so. And I also use a Fabriano Artistico cold-pressed watercolor paper. Um, Unfortunately, I actually don't have any with me in the studio. I'll be sure to link that down below. It's an awesome, awesome paper. It's actually, I like it a lot better than this particular paper, mostly because this is acrylic paper. The weight of the Artistico is just so much stronger. It's cold pressed. When you pull your masking off, you know, it doesn't rip up the paper necessarily. So I really, really love that. And I do some of my larger abstract paintings with that particular paper. Another material that I paint with is Yepo paper. And what's cool about Yepo paper is it's completely man-made. So no trees are harmed in the making of Yepo paper. It has like a, it's almost like a waterproof feeling material. Acrylic paper, watercolor paper feels like more or less true paper. And it feels like a, a canvas or something of that material. Whereas Yepo paper, is not porous, It's the paint is gonna sit on top of it. It's not necessarily gonna seep into it. And it just has a completely different feel when you're painting on it and scraping it with a um, palette knife than traditional paper. The paint slides a lot more on a Yepo paper, uh, which is super cool and I really like it. Um, when I'm going for a certain look, I like using Yepo. Plus I just feel a lot better about the fact that it's a man-made paper and it's completely waterproof, it doesn't tarnish. Um, so I like that. I like it for, for those reasons. Um, some people, <laughs> and I kind of agree with them, some people say that Yepo paper feels cheap um, because it doesn't feel like a true, you know, artisan paper. Um, and I understand that logic. Um, however, Yepo does have its benefits. Okay, so let's talk paint. Kind of a common misconception that a lot of young artists make when they're starting out is they buy a bunch of student grade paint. When I say student grade paints, I mean paints like this. There's nothing wrong with this paint. Let me just make a, a clear disclaimer. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this paint. However, some people get it twisted in which they buy really cheap paint and really expensive canvas or really expensive paintbrush. So let's just keep in mind that a painting is exactly that, a painting, right? It is paint that you have made into something. Seems like common sense, but the <laughs> really the most important thing that you should be putting your money towards as an artist is not necessarily the tools in which you're using to paint and really not necessarily the substrate that you're painting on, but your paint. That is hands down the number one most important tool as an artist. If you're putting money towards something, buy good paint. I've gone through a bunch of different um, paint brands, literally everything under the sun. And the one paint that I found that really, 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 really works, um, it a little goes a very long way, is Golden. You can buy it in tiny jars. Yes, it is expensive. Um, however, this is truly professional grade paint. So what's the difference of, let's say, something like a Liquitex Basics or an Artist Law versus something like a Golden? These are gonna be your student grade paints, right? So what is student grade paint? Basically, what makes it affordable is the fact that there's less pigment in these particular paints than there are in these. So that's what you're paying for when you buy paints, right? And what it, what does that mean? The pigment is the color. So this is gonna have a richer color. If you did a one-to-one, -one, 
this is gonna be much more vibrant, much more rich than something like this. And the reason that that's important is as an artist, we're blending our colors, right? Very rarely do we use colors, you know, straight out of the jar. Um, so when you're blending a bunch of these, you're getting a lot of filler. You're getting a lot of binding that pretty much holds the pigment together. Whereas this is much more packed with pigment, a lot more vibrant. You'll notice if you do uh, transition into using golden paints, um, <laughs> I warn you, they are expensive, but your work will thank you for this. Your colors are gonna be richer. They're gonna be more vibrant and you're gonna use less paint. One thing in particular, when you're looking at these two paints to keep in mind, Yes, the jars are substantially more expensive than let's say a tube, for example. But when you're squirting out a tube onto your palette paper, there's no way to get that paint back in the tube, right? It's like toothpaste or anything else. Uh, once it's out, better hope that you're gonna use it because it's not going back in there. This, however, once you, once you use some of this and you pull some of this out on your palette with your palette knife and you're dropping it on the palette, uh, let's say maybe you put out too much. Well, when you're done painting, you've mixed your colors, you've completed your work, you can drop it right back in the jar, right? So you're actually, you're gonna use less paint with a professional paint like this um, because it is more rich in pigment. And then if you go with the jar option, they do have smaller jars, you know, and obviously I use a lot of white to blend. So I, I have a big white tub. You know, if you're using the jars, you put the paint back in there and it's no no harm, no foul. So you can be a little more liberal with, you, you know, your paints and blending your paints because you throw them back in the jar. I use primarily heavy body paints um, from Golden, but I also do use some of their fluids and you can kind of hear, has a little more uh, viscosity to it, which basically just means that it's, it's more water-like and it flows more, whereas this paint, it's kind of like Dairy Queen, right? I can hold it upside down. It's not coming out. So very, very thick, heavy body paints. Um, and I like that. I like a little body to it. You can create some nice texture um, in your paint when you are utilizing heavy body. So another type of paint that I use is spray paint. So I, ha I have um, a variety of different types. I like uh, Montana. Montana Gold, they're super awesome. I also use Liquitex Professional Spray Paint as well. Honestly, at times, even the Liquitex Professional uh, Paint as well, although I do prefer Golden over Liquitex. So yeah, that's, that's kind of paint in a nutshell. I mean, again, you're an artist, you're a painter. Utilize that paint. Put your money towards paint and not necessarily put it towards fancy brushes, et cetera, et cetera. That brings me to my next point. So now let's talk about brushes, right? Uh, everybody thinks that you need to have fancy brushes in order to make beautiful paintings. That is just simply false. Do not fall victim to that ideology. Now, one caveat I will say, I'm an abstract artist, therefore I'm not a watercolor artist. I'm not a landscape artist and so brushes might be a little bit trickier and a little more important for those particular types of artists. Um, for me personally, as an abstract artist, does not matter what brush I use. I will use a toothbrush uh, if it's giving me what I need in my painting and the texture that I need. Let's go through brushes really quickly. They can come in all different types, shapes, and sizes. Basically, I wouldn't get lost in a lot of the nonsense. I don't even honestly treat my brushes that well. Um, I probably should be a little nicer to them, but um, yeah, I mean, this is this came from Home Depot, right? This is just a four inch brush, standard painting brush, probably could paint a fence with this brush. Um, I use this on large abstracts. This is a three inch brush. I personally love using flat brushes. They're not round. You know, some of them even have a little bit of an angle to them. I've got all different types. I've got a, a couple fancy brushes that are super nice and I've got dirt cheap brushes that I got at the hardware store. Do not get trapped in thinking you need a fancy brush to make art. It doesn't truthfully matter. I wouldn't get caught up too much in, in the brushes. Find ones that you like. There is a difference in synthetic brushes like these compared to like a natural bristle brush like this. 
Synthetic brushes are gonna run paint a lot easier off of them. Um, these are gonna hold paint a little bit better. With that being said, these are a lot harder to clean than these, just because again, it's synthetic and it's like, I believe it's made with like a plastic, almost um, fibrous material that, you know, the paint just kind of rolls right off of it when you hit it with water. Whereas these, it's hair, so it's porous and, um, especially if you don't condition them, they'll really soak up a lot of paint. So that's brushes. Brushes, there's all shapes and sizes. I use a ton of different brushes. Again, most of what I'm using is gonna be a flat brush. I don't really prefer round brushes. I just like a flat brush. And I like to have, I like the brush to have, um, for example, this is like a really soft brush, as you can kind of see. By the way, these are wet. Uh, I just cleaned these, that's why it looks like it's wet. Other brushes, you know, are a lot harder and they have a little more of like a spring to them. I like that, I like, I like a brush that's gonna kind of push back on me a little bit. I don't like um, when I'm using heavy body paints to, you know, dip my paint in there and then push it up against the canvas. The brush just kind of like melts into the paint and the canvas. I really like a, a nice, push back on my brush so I can really kind of feel um, tension between the brush and the canvas. Now let's go through palette knives. There's all different types of palette knives, all different sizes. So for example, you know, here's a different shape. Palette knives are great tools when you're blending your paint, but they're also great to just use for painting. Maybe you're not necessarily a brush person or you prefer working with a more rigid tool. Palette knife is a great tool for that. So you wanna make sure that you have a few in the studio. Doesn't matter what size, just kind of whatever calls to you. Um, again, I personally prefer this size. Doesn't matter the brand um, to blend everything up with and then also to apply to canvas, uh, this, whoa, this obviously has seen some better days and I love it. I mean, it's one of my favorite palette knives. So for good reason, um, I just like the shape. Yeah, look at all that juicy goodness. Can you get it? Let's see. Oh yeah. I actually have to like sand these things down at times. They get so gunky, which is kind of gnarly. But anyways, so beyond brushes, and beyond palette knives, a lot of artists, especially abstract artists, um, get really resourceful with different tools that they use to push and pull paint, to scrape paint, um, to carve into the surfaces. Um, so a few things that I use are like a little squeegee. You know, I'm pretty sure I bought this at Home Depot and it's just a little textured scrapey tool that, um, you know, I can put some paint on a canvas and then hit it with this and it just gives it a nice scrape to it also love a good catalyst wedge. Here's one with some more texture to it. And these are great because again, they're almost like a spatula or um, some sort of flat material that you just push and pull paint with and you just get really interesting and unique textures. It's just different application styles. Um, I've also got a bunch of these scraper things from Home Depot. And uh, let's see, this is a plastic refinishing tool. Get creative, go to your local Home Depot or Lowe's or you know home improvement store that you have in your town and just see what types of fun explorative things you could mess around with. I mean, you can't go wrong. As long as you're creating art, I think that's all that matters. So in closing, let's talk about varnish. I have always used a spray varnish up until very, very recently. I normally would start with a satin and then finish with a semi-gloss. The reason I have veered away from doing spray varnish is one, it takes a lot of coats. Two, it smells god awful. Even if you're spraying this outside, it's going to just intoxicate the air with really harsh chemicals you don't wanna be breathing in. You don't want your dogs to be breathing in, your kids, your neighbors to be breathing in. And it's very, very flammable. I don't know, I just, uh, I'm kind of, into natural stuff and I this is just super intense for me. So I've veered away from this. It's hard to travel with. I've actually started exploring with some gloss varnish. So far, I'm really, really happy with this. It doesn't have a super strong odor. Um, I mean, it definitely has an odor, I, don't get me wrong, but it just smells like paint. Um, it doesn't smell like spray paint like some of the uh, actual spray stuff does for obvious reasons. 
this is liquid, it's not in an aerosol can. So I like that I can do this here in my studio. I'm not gonna harm anyone. It's not gonna have a really uh, stinky odor, which is nice. And I really, really like that flexibility that it gives me. I can work a little bit faster. I don't have to, you know, I live in Southern California, so I can put my paintings outside and spray them and not worry about rain. Um, but, you know, it's still stinky and the neighbors can smell it. And I just, I don't feel good about my plants being around all that. So anyways, uh, so far this has been treating me pretty good. Um, I'll sh I'm sure I'll do a review on this uh, coming up as well. That pretty much sums it up. The only other thing really that I think every artist should have, if you're just wanting to throw in some different texture, something like these, it's an art crayon. And I like, using these on paintings just because they give it that extra texture uh, similar to like an oil stick or something like that which i have oil sticks i also have um charcoal you know it's nice sometimes when you're finished with a painting like uh let's see i'm not sure if you can see that um right here i've got some oil or some of these art crayons um, and oil sticks. I've also got some spray paint kind of, you know, fluttered throughout. So it's nice to just give paintings an additional texture, like a little sprinkle on top. So that's what I use these for. Another kind of paint that I, I also use in addition to the art crayons are these. These are Posca pens. They're basically little paint pens that you can use to paint. I love them. They're light fast. They're artist grade. There's a lot of artists that exclusively use Posca pens to paint on phones, to paint on vans, to paint on shoes, surfboards, you name it. If I really want to get in and do some doodling or things of that nature, um, you can even blend them to create really unique colors. I love them. I think it's an awesome tool to have. Why is gesso important? Uh, gesso is an important tool to have alongside of your paint in the studio as an artist, because if you mess up, or you want to just kind of gesso over paper before you get started painting it to give it more of a, like a canvas uh, type texture. Gesso is great for that. It is like your magic eraser as an artist, and it's also great for building texture. Uh, you can get really thick bodied gesso. This is not, this is a little bit more liquid like, but uh, gesso is phenomenal. I actually have another video that I'll link, and this is just phenomenal. So I definitely think this is worthy. And tape. Tape is great when you want to create a nice margin around your work. Why is that important? Well, it gives paper an additional pop. So when you're gonna frame this, which you should always frame paper paintings, you're gonna put a mat on top of this. So it gives you a little bit of border room for the framer to work with. Um, you also could just stick this in a frame without a mat and you already have sort of created the mat for yourself. So there's different, uh, all different types of tape. You can do a half inch tape, which is what this is. You can do more of like a true masking tape, which is what this is. All different types of ch tapes. Doesn't necessarily have to be artist grade. Whatever you like, go with that. Okay, so that pretty much covers art supplies that I use, some of the best art supplies that I think can be used. In review, we talked about canvas, we talked about paper, we talked about different types of paints, both heavy body, um, fluid, and spray paint, brushes, palette knives, and varnish, as well as gesso. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and stay creative.